Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's get at it. Who's ready? Let me pray because I got, when I tell y'all I got a lot, I got to make up. I got to make up for Monday. This is one you need to hear. You got to hear this, what I'm going to share with you, because it's going to help you and bless your life. And uh, let's go. God, thank you. And we praise your holy name for allowing us to be here and to gather in this way. I pray for every family. I pray for every person on the sound of my voice that you would bless them, touch them, strengthen them, encourage them. Help us as we've gathered to have a form of synergy that we can feel your power and we can gain strength and encouragement in this moment. God, this has been a rough 18 months, 16 months, years. Some of us have lost loved ones, parents, children, siblings to coronavirus. Some have lost loved ones to old age, to natural causes. But God, we thank you that you've kept us. And it's by your mercies, we're not all consumed. Your compassions fail not great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And the fact, God, that you've allowed us to see the sunshine today, the fact that you've been with us in this way, God, we are grateful. And we're thankful, God, and help us to hear from heaven. Help us to hear from heaven and clear up the clutter that would try to distract us, pull us back, hold us down, weigh us down, free us on this Friday. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all, I got to testify. Uh, you know, all of us have dealt with aging in some way or another. And sometimes, I mean, you know, we're doing everything we can to stop gray hair, to stop wrinkles, to stop, you know, uh, all type of stuff that happens as you age. I have to say this, man. I was looking at, I saw somebody that I go to school with and uh, I, I saw them and I was like, wow, this, this guy is younger than me. And I was like, wow. You know, I was like, wow, I, I, he he looked old and I was like, and he hadn't, here's the thing, he hadn't lived a rough life. And I was like, wow, man, God, you really been good to me. I have to be honest because, you know, hey, man, it feels good as you age to age gracefully. And uh, so, you know, hey, I just want to give that testimony. If for nothing else, I'm grateful that I'm aging gracefully. Hey, man, listen. So I want to talk about growth. I want to talk about growth. Somebody type out growth. I want you to type out growth. Now I'm done with all preliminaries and all that stuff. I'm going to teach preach. <laughs> um, I want to talk about growth. And that is you must guard your growth. Somebody type that out. Guard your growth. Now, today's message is in lesson is not going to be as structured as you would see it or hear it over the pulpit. You know, when I teach and preach and I, I don't even want to use that term pulpit because it seems so old and we transition and part of me ministering is growing. And so some of those old cliches we used to use, if we're going to reach a new audience and unchurched people, we've got to use language that they're familiar with. And those of us who are churchy or, or, or pastors or leaders or practitioners, prognosticators, prophets, all of that. We got to really adjust and tweak how we speak because we're communicators. Uh, I'm working on my third book now. It is a form of communication that's in written form. And so I want you to guard your growth. And I want to say this to you really quickly, and I want you to hear me in all sincerity. And that is familiarity breeds resentment. Familiarity breeds resentment. What do you mean by that? If you are going to grow, sometime your growth will offend people who are familiar with you. Your growth will be uncomfortable for people who've known you. I want to say this, but you have to guard your growth and be very intentional about who gets your time, who gets your energy, who gets your ear. I, I, want, I want everybody to get this. I'm going to write this out. Ain't Diane. 
I thought you were mad at me, ain't Diane? I ain't heard from you or seen you in a while. I got to come down to Nashville just to see you. Good to see you. There's two passages of scripture that I shared and it's so important. And I want you to hear this because what I'm sharing right now is coming directly from my heart. Matthew chapter 12, verse 48 and Mark chapter six, verse five. In both of these passages of scripture, we see we see challenges to Jesus's growth. One occasion in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is teaching and he's he's preaching. He started his public ministry at 30 years of age. Jesus started his public ministry at 30 years old. Excuse me. He's crucified at 33. Now I need you to hear this. When Jesus starts his public ministry, his family did not fully embrace it. They didn't fully embrace it because after all, they had grown up with Jesus. They had seen Jesus. And so because they had a former understanding of who he was or who they thought he was, it was difficult for them to see who he was becoming. And therein lies the problem sometimes. Sometimes people who've seen us in our former state have a hard time seeing us become who God has intended for us to come become. And I want to say this really quickly. We have to give people room to grow and space to grow. And we have to be careful not to limit people to how we've known them to saying that's as far as they're going to go. That's who they're going to be. And I can't believe for them to become something different. Because something interesting happens in Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, now mind you, Jesus is starting his, he started his public ministry. His mother and his brothers, now watch this, because I want to say this, I want to say this, sometimes people who don't know you can better embrace you in a new season. Because all they see in you is the gift, the personality, what you have to offer now. They don't, they don't know your background. All they know is, ooh, I like what I get from this person. They don't know, they don't know the stuff, they don't know good or bad. They know now and they're like, I love this. Where have you been? I have people sometimes say to me, I get messages, where have you been? Like, like I came out of nowhere. But, but to them, it has been that way because they're just getting introduced to me. And sometimes your biggest hater or critic can be somebody who's known you the longest. And your greatest supporter and friend and fan can be somebody who's just getting to know you because you have something for them in this new season. And because you're walking into a new season, you have to be very careful. I want you to get this. I'm not big on just cut people off, cut people off. I'm not one of those people who just says cut people off. Y'all know where I stand. I say compartmentalize people. Put them in the category where they belong. Don't put people who are not true friends in a friend category. Don't put people who are opponents of yours in an ally category. You know what I'm saying? I think the problem is we, we think it's all about cut no, no, always because there's use for everybody. Jesus never called Judas out or separated him because in the end, Judas hangs himself. In fact, if there's no Judas, there's no crucifixion. If there's no crucifixion, there's no resurrection. If there's no resurrection, there's no salvation. If there's no salvation arising from the dead, there's no all power in my hand. Are y'all hearing me? But the point I want to extrapolate is this. Jesus's mother and brothers Here's what they said. Read the context. I want you to read this in Matthew chapter 12. The Bible says that Jesus has a crowd around him. He's got a group of people who are sitting at his feet. I mean, the, the words he spoke, never had they heard a man speak like him. 
The Bible says he didn't preach or teach like the scribes. He spoke with authority. He spoke in such a way that, that, that it drew the people in. So he's in a room full of people who are sitting listening to him. And his mother and brothers hear about it. And they said, hold on, he's gone mad. Read the text. It's crazy, y'all. They said, what in the world? Jesus, he done start a ministry. They go to where he is and they tell him to come out to them. Now watch this. And they stop Jesus and interrupt him in the middle of his ministry and say to him, your mother and brother brothers are outside and they're waiting on you and they want to talk to you. Watch what Jesus said. One of his coldest lines. He said, who is my mother and who is my brothers? Except for those who do the will of the one who sent me. Watch what he says. He says, who is my mother and who is my brothers? Except those who are tied to my ministry and my destiny in this moment. And I want you to hear me on today. If we're not careful, we will feel as though we are obligated to give an audience to people who've known us, but really aren't doing anything for us, supporting us, backing us, helping us in this season. God deliver us from the spirit of feeling obligated to give an audience to people just because we've known them in the past. Now, I'm not dogging the people we've known in the past or telling you separate yourself from all the people you've known from your past. I'm not saying that, but here's what I want you to understand. Just because they're a part of your past doesn't mean they fit into your future. I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to say it again so you can get it. Just because they're a part of your past doesn't mean they fit into your future. Because you will miss your future and your destiny and who God intends for you to become because some of the people who've known you before want to continue to pull you back down and put you back into that box they have known you to be in for so long. And if you are going to free yourself and walk into your future, sometimes you have to take a hard stance and say, who is my mother and brother? Who am I supposed to be giving attention to? Who am I supposed to be giving an audience to? I want you to hear this. The Lord put this in my spirit this morning. Please type this out because God helped me to understand this and it freed me. It freed me. I want to say it how the spirit gave to me. Always be approachable, but don't always be available. I'm going to say it again so you can get it. Always be approachable, but don't always be available. I want to say it again, and I'm going to highlight this piece who is my mother and my brother. God knows I love my mother more than anybody in the world. So I'm not. So when I say this, I'm not saying, oh, pastor said that. His, listen, my mother is number one. I happen to have that type of relationship with my mother. Do you hear me? My, my mother is number one. My number one encourager is my mother. When I'm down now, this is for free. I go to my mother. When I want to hear a song, when I want to sit, and people don't, people don't always know that. And here's what, I, you know, I want to throw this out. This is a caveat. Some of the people who are most important to you, social media doesn't always see it. See, social media will deceive people and make you think certain people are your friends and certain people are really not that close to you. My, my kids don't even met the, the most important people to me aren't even, you won't even see them in us engage on social media because in real life, and I want to encourage somebody, and this is for free food for thought, protect certain parts of your life from the public. Protect certain parts of your life from the public. I want to say it again. Protect certain parts of your life from the public. I am going to say it again because it's so important. Protect everybody don't have to see when we go out to eat. Everybody's not going to see our vacations. Everybody's not going to see high moments in my life. Everybody's not going to see private moments because it's not for the public. And I don't want the public pri the public gets what I want you to see. I'm not showing you're not privy to my pri I'm just going to say this. I love everybody. And you should be the same way. I don't want to know certain stuff about you. I told the church this on Wednesday. 
I don't, the less I know about some people, the better our relationship can be. Cause I don't want to know that part about you. I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your failures. I don't want to know your mistakes. I don't want to know how you sinned. I don't. I want to know how to pray for you and help you, but I don't want to see that. You, are you understand what I'm saying? Protect certain parts of your life, Kim, and keep them private. And I want to say this really quickly back to the point that I'm making. You've got to be really careful that not everybody has access to you. And I want to help y'all understand something. I'm in a season where I have welcomed so many people to the table. I've welcomed so many people to get close to me. I've invited so many people to, to, to have intimate moments. And I've learned that you have to limit who has access. Because some people, they may start off good. But the Bible says Satan entered Judas. I don't even think Judas knew he was going to betray Jesus. I don't. I, I, I think Judas started off good in his mind. Now, now, Jesus, when he chose him, the Bible says, and Judas, when he chose his disciples and Judas, the one who would betray him. So Jesus knew it. God knew it. But, but I think that Judas went into the relationship and he said, man, Jesus is phenomenal, man. And he, and I think that when he started getting in ministry and he started getting behind the scenes and he started seeing stuff he didn't agree with. Now watch this. Jesus is God in human flesh. It doesn't mean he saw him sin. It doesn't mean he saw anything immoral or unethical. Some people can see stuff with you and just disagree with it and stop liking you. This is why you, you got to be careful, y'all. And I want to tell y'all. Do not put your stock in people because the same people who will say Hosanna when he's riding into Jerusalem are the same people who will be swayed by the Sanhedrin to say crucify him. And I am not going to be one of those people who put stock in what people say. Some of the people who love you and say, they oh, I love you and I'll always be with you. Okay. Okay. I'm always with y'all. They might leave. I, I, I'm, I'm here. Okay. And at midnight, when the cock crows, you will betray me and deny me three times. I want you to get this. And I want you to hear me on today. This has come from 20 years of ministry experience, 44 years of living, um, 21 years as a business owner, I know human nature. In fact, can I give y'all a verse that we you will not hear quoted a lot and people don't like this? I want to say this. The prophet Jeremiah said this. Buckle up your seatbelt. Sit up straight for me. And get this. The prophet Jeremiah says this. Here's what he says. Man's heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm going to say it again. Man's heart and woman is desperately wicked, is depraved. People are fickle. They're funny. They change with the weather. They get, they get happy feet. And it's interesting to me that when some people change up on you, it can create a domino effect. That you start getting other people like, they didn't even have a problem or issue. I, you know what I believe? I'm going to give this to y'all and I'm going to get to the main message because I want to stay on point. But I got to let the Holy Spirit flow. I always ask myself when Jesus is being crucified, Gina, I ask myself this. Now, now I'm going to take my time with this moment because I think about this as a pastor, as a leader, as a community leader and, and, and pillar, all that stuff. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit give it to me as I give it to y'all. Um. I think about how Jesus opened up the eyes of the blind, how Jesus fed people, how there were people in that audience who were crippled, who were walking, people who were deaf, who before couldn't hear. How many of those same people were in the crowd when Pilate said, what should I do with him? And those same people he fed. People who before couldn't even see, who couldn't hear, and with their eyes said, crucify him. Wow. Wow. 
Let me say this because not many pastors get a chance or opportunity to say this. It is amazing to me that the people sometimes you ride for, and I'm not, I'm not having no problem. I'm just, I'm stating the case and preaching. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Some of the people you ride for and you know their secrets and you hide their bodies and you bury their bones. As soon as a slight disagreement jump off, they leave. And you're like, wow. <laughs> Real, like, wow, like, wow. Like, wow. Like, I kept quiet that you was messing around with him, her, him, that, and you got, and you got that from that, from him. I kept quiet about how that went with that and that, and I patched that together and helped you with that. How I put referral and, that, and I got, I got you that, and then you, wow. But I want you to get this on the day. It's not always personal. It's the depraved condition of people's hearts. Man's heart is desperately wicked. And here's what God says. I don't want you to put too much stock in what people say. Because the same people who build you up will be a part of tearing you down. Now, let me say this to you real quick. Back to the script that I have. And I want you to get this. Matthew chapter 12, Mark chapter 6. Um, please don't miss this. Matthew chapter 12, his mother and brothers at the door, right? Tell, here's, let, let me paraphrase it. Let, let me give y'all the Sullivan version. Here's his, here's his mother and his brothers. Jesus in there preaching. What, what, what in the world Jesus up in there doing preaching? Tell that boy, come on out here. We out here waiting. Tell, you know what they were doing? They were trying to put him back in the context. They knew him. They they didn't they didn't familiarity. Can I give y'all this real quick? Sometimes people are familiar with you. They knew you, but they don't know you. I'm gonna say this again. I'm gonna say it just so you catch it. They knew you, but they don't know you. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it again. You cannot use the information you knew about me before as what you use to measure me now. Yeah, we went to school together. I'm a whole different version than I was at 18. I'm a whole different man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You, got, you, you need to update your version of me. I want to say this to you real quick. Just because you knew me don't mean you know me. The other day, I thought about somebody who was with me at one point and they're not there. And I'm like, whatever they're saying about me, they've been gone so long. They don't even know what I'm on right now. And I'm so fluid and ministry is so fluid. And I'm so on to the next one that they've got old information. Uh, Latoya was sitting with me. She always helps me with my devices. And um, she said, Pastor, you know, the, the problem, I said, my stuff is not working. It's not flowing right. It's not operating. My iPad is shutting down. My phone's acting up. She said, have you done your updates? I said, you know what? I keep getting these notifications that I need to do these updates. But I said, no, I haven't done the updates. She said, sit down. Sit down. Here, I'm going to do the updates. She took some time and she said, now for this device, you're going to have to plug it up for a while, Gina, and you're going to have to let it sit for an hour and it's going to have to update because you got all these updates. And the reason that you're you, you know, your icons and your, um, your, um, what are those things? Your apps are not working is because they're not updated. She said, you need to update the phone and you need to update all of these different apps. That's why they're operating slow. Can I tell y'all that the reason some relationships aren't working? The really, the, the, the reason certain relationships that you had are not working right now is because You've become a new version and you've been updating, but they, they failed to update and download who you've become. So, so they're trying to have a relationship with you based upon how they knew you. 
And so they're, they're throwing jokes at you and they're coming with angles or they are, you know, belittling you in a certain way or they're or they're measuring you or su suggesting things about you. And you like you're not going to get the same response out of me that way, because that's not who I am. <laughs> you're not going to get me to laugh at that that way, because that's because my mind is totally different. You need you need to update it. You need. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> And I, I need you to plug in. I need you to study where I'm at right now. I need you to look at how I'm moving right now. And then you'll understand that the version you see of me now, that ain't that. And I'll help you understand this. And I live by this cold. Family, friend, or foe. I want to say this. All three of them Fs. Family, friend, or foe. I'm equal across the board. If we, if we down, we down. If you got smoke, that's what it is. <laughs> I wish I had a witness in here. If that's where you at, that's where you at. But I want you to understand something on the day. You have to be very careful that you are not pulled back into someone else's version of you because that's who they want you to be. And some people, your growth makes them feel guilty. Some people don't want to see you go here. And let me say this. Let me throw this out there. This, here's a caveat. Let me throw this out. This for free, y'all. Study my movements now. Sit down and study what I'm doing right now. Get these updates. I want to say this now. Um, be careful who's close to you because they're feeding people information about you. This is just survival one-on-one. Survival one-on-one. This, this is... I could take it spiritual and tell you all that. I could talk about how Judas went to the San, to the Sanhedrin and he went. I mean, I could go spiritual with it, but just let me be practical with you. Once I get, once I get an inkling that somebody I don't want to know information about me has access to somebody in my circle who's potentially compromised, access denied. I'm going to say it again. Once I suspect there's somebody in my circle who's connected to somebody I don't want to know certain information or moves about me, I'm not get, I'm limiting my access to you <laughs> because loose lips sink ship. And I want to tell y'all this. That may sound like a hard stance. I don't care. It, it is what it is. I can give you all the scriptural stuff you need if you want to and show you how King David was careful. I could talk about how Eli Elisha, you know, when Elisha and the king of Syria is finding out, you know, Elisha's finding out intel about him and he's telling people how to navigate. And then the king gets mad and says, who in the world is giving him information? And then they speak and say, nobody's leaking information, king, but there's a prophet over there named Elisha and he sees stuff. That prophet sees stuff that we, we can't, you can't control. And then the Bible says that they came and surrounded the prophet Elisha's house and his servant got nervous. And Elisha tells, tells God, he says, God, open up his eyes that he might see that there's more with us than there are against us. So he had this supernatural sense. I want you to understand this and I want to help somebody on the day. These are some things you need to beware of when you're growing. You need to beware of Who's around you that's trying to shrink you? Now, I told you I'm going to give it to y'all how the Holy Spirit. Somebody give me the time real quick because I got one more I want to give you. I got one more I want to give you. Now, when church opens back up, when we open up on Father's Day, I am not going to be giving it out like this. I've been trying to, you know what? The Lord laid on my heart to give us so much during this season of COVID because I really felt it was my job to feed the people of God. Thank you, Kwanzaa, to feed the people of God, to encourage people and to keep them motivated so y'all wouldn't lose your minds in COVID. So I've gone hard on Mondays and Fridays, but <laughs> I am going to kind of reduce my time and what I share um, when we open back up on Father's Day because I'm not going to give all this online and, and then we got Sunday morning. Amen. Begin. So let me give this second one to you. Matthew chapter 12, we talked about that. Jesus' mother and brothers are outside, telling them to come outside. Jesus says, no, and here's what he says. I want to pull out of this. Jesus said, I'm more tied into those who are doing ministry with me. I want to see you, Edie. We miss you. He says, I'm, I want you to get this. Our church knows this. I live by this. My family knows this. 
I am going, we're going to do eternity together. We're going to be in eternity together, right? So, excuse me. The people I do ministry with, the people who are called to my voice, the people who are connected to my vision and my passion and what I'm passionate about, what my call is, those are the people who get primary focus in my life. I'm going to say this again. I'm, I'm going to say it. The people who are called to my voice, the people I shepherd, the people who are right under me, my church, the, the people who serve in ministry with me on front line. Those are the people who get first. They get first dibs. That's who I give attention to. To me, everything else is secondary. It doesn't mean it's bad. Everything just has to know its place. And so if you're family and you fall under that line, cool. We do ministry together and we just happen to be family. I love it. If you're family and you don't tie into that, then you just family. I'm going to be real with you. That Because I'm going to be real with you. I want you to catch this. Ebony, watch this. When you pour all your blood, sweat, and tears into business, into ministry, into what you're building, into what you're doing, you need to pour into the people who are helping you do that. Those are the people who get your ear, who get your attention, who get your time, who hold conversations. Those are the first ones. And that was the principle Jesus was teaching. I want to help us understand how to prioritize the people in our lives. Because what Jesus was saying was, yes, I love my mother and my brothers. But right now, I'm feeding the people God has called me to. And here's what he says. Who is my brother and who is my mother? but the people who I've been called to. And this is why you can get tricked and you can get played because sometimes your family can try to manipulate you and make you think you, well, we family. Well, I mean, all this that I've been doing, I got family members. I'm going to say this and, and, and I'm not throwing shade. I love, I've got a great family. So I want people to know this. So I don't want people walking away. I got family on this line. I don't want people walking away. He, he don't love his family. That is not the case. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I've got family, and I'm just going to throw it out there, who've, who've lived in our city and been around, never have gotten behind what we've done. And that's cool. They go where, they're, where they feel connected. But don't come to me wanting from me what you don't give. I'm going to say it and put it out there. Don't come to look to get a withdrawal from me, and we ain't never had no relationship like that. Yeah, we blood, but that don't mean you get for No, what that mean? And that's what Jesus was teaching. Jesus was helping us to understand the people who are most connected with me are the people who are going hard in the paint with me because I'm called to them and we're going to live together for eternity. So right now, mama, fall back. Right now, brother, fall back. Couldn't fall back. Well, that's my cousin. Well, you sure don't act like it because I'm going to throw it out there like that. Ha! <laughs> You know, that's my, and, and here's what I, I want to say this. I want to throw this out there. I'm going to give y'all extra today. And then I'm going to go to Mark chapter six. It's amazing to me how people, my, I, this is my godmother on the line, my Aunt Faith, who is a member of our church. You understand what I'm saying? So that's, we love our people. I love my family on both sides all the way around. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not, but I want to say this really quickly. Um, to me, and I'm, I put this out there like that, to me. To me, and I'm not venting, so I don't want somebody, he just own it. I, I, I want to say this clear, because y'all can feel what I'm saying. If you start something or do something, and the people you know, friends, family, whatever, don't support it, I mean, they're kind of showing you, but but then you watch them get behind everything else and everybody else, and then, they, and then you're like, wow, okay, yeah, that's cool. Well, that's cool. That... Let me help you understand something. I, I, had, I had somebody do this to me. I had somebody do this to me, straight up. I'm not even going to go there. Y'all got the point. I'm not even going to go there. I'm not going to go there because cause, cause I want to be careful and I want to save on time. I'm going to give y'all this and I'm going to shift. Mark chapter six. Here's another example. Let me give this to y'all. This is two messages. I'm going to have to put this one on for Monday, but I'm going to throw a stone at it. I'm going to throw a stone at this Joe Dessa. I'm going to throw a stone at it. Mark chapter six. When I talk about growth, you know, things that hinder your growth, Jesus goes back to his hometown. Elaine, this family on my line right now, Clemens. Watch this. Jesus goes back to his hometown, Nicole. When he goes back, the Bible says they didn't embrace him because they knew him. 
He came back. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna start talking. I'm, I'm gonna talk softer. So I say this all the time, Pastor. Why not love and support the ones you love? I, I'm come on now. If it's love, love is an action word, right? <laughs> so watch this. Um, I want you to get this. Jesus has healed people, fed people, delivered demoniacs. He's got a major, I mean, he's doing crazy ministry. He goes back to his hometown. And the Bible says he could do no many mighty works there. It says that Jesus couldn't perform miracles there. Why? Because of their unbelief, they didn't believe who he had become because they were stuck on who he'd been. They couldn't embrace who he had become because they were stuck on who he'd been. And Jesus didn't stay there long. I'm going to come back to this Monday and dig deeper. Do not stay long in places where people are offended at who you've become. He what? He talking about what? Let me go. I had somebody, I had somebody, true story. I had a customer of mine when I used to cut hair. I'm going to close with this. I had a I had a customer of mine who, when I was in Bible college, I'm going to close with this because this is where I want you to feel it. I had a customer of mine, right? Mantha, who I used to cut her hair. I used to cut her hair and we had a good working relationship. She was a client of mine. And when I was on Arlington, I used to cut her hair. I think I still cut, was cutting her hair when I moved to 38th Street. Now, I've been out of barbering for like 14 years, right? Or I, however long I've been out of it for a minute. So I've been out of it, right? So, you know, not long ago, she's like storming to the church, demanding an audience with me. And, you know, the secretary and other people have been telling me there's this so-and-so who I couldn't even remember. I couldn't, you know, when I see certain people, I remember, I remember, I'm like, oh, that's who, okay, who, that's who that is. I heard it. I was like, I know that name, but I, I couldn't put the face with the name, right? So I'm like, how is she demanding an audience with me? Like, she said, you just cut her hair. And I'm like, okay, but I've been pastoring for like 14, 15 years. I haven't cut hair in a while. So I'm so part of me, I want to give this to y'all. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, okay, so I used to cut your hair. I've been pastoring for 14 years. Why have I never seen you at a service? but you're demanding an audience with me. Come on, think with me. I just want that to sit on everybody's head. You, you come last minute in the, in the middle of a pandemic. When we got social distancing and all that, how you gonna demand an audience with me? And I've been available at church for 14 years and I ain't seen you, boo. How you think I'm obligated? I'm just helping y'all. Because y'all, common sense is not common anymore. And I don't understand how some people do what they do. And I'm like, okay, I'm a thinking person. And if I haven't seen you for 14 years and all that, and you had a store or you had something, and I never stopped by there, and I never said hello, and I never came until I had a problem or a need, or I came to get something from you, I would feel uncomfortable trying to place demands on you based upon how I knew you before rather than embracing who you become. So you mad at the barriers and the, and the, and the protocol and the buffers I got in place and you won't embrace who I, so in her mind, she's thinking Kenny the barber needs to come out here and see me. So we're going to have to educate you. We're going to have to educate you and we're going to have to update you because you're trying to go off information on who you knew me it doesn't mean I've changed. It don't mean I dislike you. But I need you to embrace who I am. And I want to give this to you in final words. If people 
cannot embrace who you have become and are becoming part ways. I want to say it again. If people want to play the petty games and do the little stuff that they used to do back then, part ways. If you cannot handle the glory of the season I'm going into, I'm sorry, you need to update. You need to update your information. I want to give this to somebody on today. I want you to walk away with, the, walk away with this. Please type this out because I need you to get it in your spirit. I need you to get it in your spirit. Do not let them make you feel guilty for growing. I want you to write that out. Do not let them make you feel guilty for growing. Oh, he done change. He different now. Well, who I'm becoming calls for it. Oh, I thought, shoot, I, I used to have his number. Uh, you still got, I'm going to call him. Uh, it's changed. I'm on, he needs to be out here. Give me, okay. Try that if you want to and think you're going to get the response you're looking for out of me that way. Come come correct. If you want to. I want to give this to you real quick and I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. Mantha, you got it. Do not let them. Y'all, this is freeing me as much as it is you because I want you to understand this. This is year 43 for me. I'm t I'm telling it at age of I want you to understand this. Do not let them because here's what will happen, y'all. And I want you, and, and you know what? And I, I said I was going to close. I got to give this to y'all. I have watched too many people feel obligated to their past and they can't be who they need to be in the present. I've watched pastors even do this. I've watched pastors who are bigger than their denominations, but because they got these clicks and these guys over here and they know that they, I, I watch, I watch people come to our church even. And I've had, I've walked this through with, 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 with ministers and members who've come out of certain denominations and they've got certain stuff in their mind. They like, but I'm getting fed here and I'm being ministered. And I know this is where God has me. It's a new season, but they're, they're they got this wrestling match because I'm in my mother's church and this is what they, but I feel led and I'm, and I'm like, and I don't push people, but I'm thinking to myself, you're going to stay in a state of stunted growth, staying where you are versus embracing. This is why Jesus said, you cannot put new wine in old wine skins because the wine skins will not stretch and they do not have the elasticity. So as that wine begins to expand, the skins can't handle it and they burst and they collapse. And there's some people who can't handle your fermenting. There's some people who can't handle your growth. There's some people who can't handle, and you gotta be careful now, and I'm gone, I think y'all got the part, the point, they will keep pulling you back. You remember when? Shoot, I remember when this, that, the other. You remember, hey, I remember that one time. Okay, that's cool. That's good. And I may like, you know, that's cool. But what sometimes people do that subtly to pull you back down a notch. To keep pulling, to keep rebel. And, and here's the thing. Don't forget where God has brought you from. And don't forget the people who've been loyal. I want to say this lest anybody misunderstand. Love all the people you've been connected with. Enjoy the good times, the good memories. I'm a stickler for loyalty. 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 I was raised loyal. I was raised. If we ride, we're going to ride till we die. I'm yours till the day we die. I promise you that. I'm a stickler for loyalty. I, I'm So I'm not saying, forget all the people in your past. <coughs> They're not going into your present. No, there's a lot of good people who can grow with you. And you can go with me if you can grow with me. But if you insist on pulling me back to where I was, then I'm sorry, I'm going to have to leave you there. Remember when Orpah and Ruth and Naomi were getting ready to leave in chapter one of Ruth? And they're getting ready to leave. And Orpah said, I'm sorry, but I got to stay here. And, and Ruth said, OK, that's cool. I love you, sis. But we out. And she left. 
She didn't let her decision make her stay where she was. She didn't let her decision to stay deter her from going. Preach. She didn't let her Orpah's decision to stay deter her from going. And what I'm saying is don't let their decision to stay where they are deter you from going where God is taking you. I'm gone. You got a whole message. Listen, Sunday is better than this. I'm sharing a message entitled, Give It All You Got. I should have spent about a half an hour preaching about that. Give it all you got. If you are going to get the results you're looking for, you got to give it all you got. The prophet Elisha tells King Joash, I want you to shoot your arrows and I want you to do it in such a way that you do it with zeal and fervency, but don't do it half-heartedly. I want to give this to y'all in passing and you'll hear this on Sunday. Um, stay away from nonchalant people. Don't let nonchalant people get around you. I'm a passionate person. Y'all know that. I got high drive, passion. Whatever I do, I'm giving it all I have. Be careful not letting apathetic people carry your vision. Uh, let, isn't this excited? We're starting this with, oh, okay. We doing that? Okay. Nonchalant, apathetic people will kill your possibilities. If you don't have fire and you don't have passion, stay on over there. Cause I'm going over here and I'm going at it hard. Look, I love y'all. God cover your people, touch us, bless us. It's Friday. We ask you to bless us, help us to focus this Friday on our future more so than on our past. Bless us. We thank you for all of our family. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for all the people we're called to and connected to. And God has put us in place us to do life with, but God help us to focus on the people who matter the most and doesn't mean that other people don't matter, but God help us to give attention and energy to that, which is most important. What you want us to do in Jesus name. Amen. All right. I love y'all. See y'all soon.